Uh, my name is Martin Brown. I'm a developer relations engineer on the Android team. And uh, this is avoiding common coroutine uh, mistakes in Compose. Uh, so in this talk, we'll take a look at some examples of how coroutines can be misused in Compose, how things go wrong when that happens, and how to fix those problems. So first things first, what do I mean by coroutines in Compose? Uh, here's what a typical Android UI layer might look like. So we have the UI elements on top, which in our case is going to be uh, Compose code. Uh, then that's talking to something like a view model or other state holder controller uh, kind of object. And then that's communicating further down to lower layers uh, where we're actually grabbing data from. And while all of this can be powered with coroutines, I want to focus on the topmost layer here. So coroutines that are started within composable code and mostly calling into the various suspending APIs that we have available in Compose. A quick disclaimer here, uh, Lint is actually pretty good uh, in Android Studio, so it would catch um, the mistakes that I'm going to show you in this talk, uh, usually. Uh, but if you make these mistakes in non-obvious ways, um, you might still uh, not be saved by Lint. Um, and it's just good to understand how and why things go wrong um, in all of these examples so that you can write more correct Compose code. Uh, as you might already know, a quick bit of theory here uh, before we get to our examples, uh, Compose transforms data into UI in three phases. And I want to focus on just the first phase here, which is composition. So composition is the phase where Compose takes the code that you've written, all of your composable functions, as well as composable lambdas, and executes that code, building a tree that represents your UI, which the rest of the phases will eventually um, display on the screen. Um, so again, as part of this phase, everything that you place directly in the bodies of composable functions or lambdas will be executed. And then when state changes, um, state managed by Compose, uh, then Compose will trigger recompositions, rerunning parts of your composable code and updating the UI. Uh, composition, uh, recompositions can happen frequently, which means that you should be prepared that your composable functions might be called frequently. They can also execute in any order as state is changing all over your application. Um, and they can also, in theory, run in parallel. That's not something that happens today, but it's a possible future optimization in the Compose runtime. So you should keep all of these things in mind and be careful about what you put directly inside composable functions. For our examples today, uh, we'll use the idea of a pizza ordering app, and uh, we'll pretend that ordering pizzas is so important for us within our example app that we want a persistent connection between the client and the server. And uh, we also want to tell the user if we have that connection, so we'll show these kinds of snack bars um, in our app, which tells us when we made the connection or if we lost it. We'll do that in a function I'm calling home screen. Uh, it's a composable function. And first of all, it has this time parameter, uh, which will receive an updated value every second. Uh, I am using this to say that whatever time it is, it must be an excellent time uh, to order a pizza through our app. Uh, this is really not how you should implement something like this. Uh, this is here for demonstration purposes. Uh, as I said, we'll pretend that this is updated every second externally. Um, so I'm using this to show a um, lot of recompositions of the home screen function. Um, and while this is not realistic, even in correct Compose code, you can see a lot of recompositions, and that's a normal part of using Compose. Um, so this uh, demonstrates something real and important. Uh, then we have the actual logic for the snack bar uh, that I showed you on the previous slide. So we have a connected value, which is either true or false. And based on that, we pick a string to show, and we use the snack bar host state that we are also receiving as a parameter uh, to call show snack bar on it, which displays a snack bar on the screen. Uh, because show snack bar is a suspending function, we need to call it inside a coroutine. And an easy way to get inside a coroutine in Compose is to create a new coroutine scope, uh, which we can do by calling remember coroutine scope. And then we can uh, simply launch new coroutines in that scope and call into the suspending function that we want to call. So uh, if we run that code, uh, we'll see that our snack bar does show on the screen, but it keeps showing over and over again, just popping up uh, endlessly. So why is that happening? Uh, we can explain this if we take a look at which parts of our code are part of the composition 
and which parts of it are not. Uh, crucially for us, uh, because this launch uh, on the coroutine scope is directly in the body of composable code, it will get executed every time that the home screen function recomposes. And as we know, we have that uh, time parameter, which means that at least every second we'll be seeing recompositions of the home screen function and launching new coroutines every second to show that snack bar. Uh, the only reason we didn't see it popping up with that frequency is because the uh, snack bar implementation throttles snack bars a bit so that the UX is nicer, but we are launching a new coroutine every second here. So um, how do we fix that? Uh, instead of creating a coroutine like that ourselves, we can use Compose APIs that help us manage coroutines. And in this case, we can use launched effect, uh, which is a composable function that will create a coroutine for you and run the code that you pass to it in that coroutine. And it will do that when it enters the composition. And when it leaves the composition, it will cancel that coroutine for you if it's still running. Importantly, it doesn't restart your coroutine across recompositions. Uh, we do have to pass in some more parameters to launch the fact though. Uh, it requires one or more keys to be passed in. And it uses these keys to determine when, if ever, it should restart the effect. Um, so in this case, for example, we can pass in both the connected value and the snack bar host state. And this will mean that whenever connected changes between true and false, or whenever we receive a new snack bar host state instance, um, launched effect will cancel the existing coroutine that it was running. We can think of this as the effect being destroyed and it will uh, create a new coroutine, uh, which will now run with the new um, values in scope. Um, and as a general rule of thumb, uh, probably um, you probably want to place any value that you reference inside the launched effect itself as uh, keys of the launched effect, unless you're very, very certain that their value will never change. Um, this code would now work correctly and trigger just a single snack bar. So in that previous example, uh, we saw that uh, creating your own coroutine um, can lead to problems as well as using remember coroutine scope. But I want to emphasize that that's not the issue on its own. The issue is just doing that inside of the composition. So let's take a look at a positive example now. Uh, let's say that we want to uh, have this list in our app which displays our selection of pizzas, their prices, and it has a, a floating action button in the bottom right corner which allows us to scroll to the top of the list when we tap it. We'll implement this in a function called pizza list, taking a list of pizzas as a parameter. Uh, inside the function we are displaying the items using a lazy column and we place both the lazy column and the button inside a box so that uh, we overlay the button over the um, list. And finally, uh, when the button is clicked, we want to scroll to the top of the list, which we can do by calling the animate scroll to item method on the list state. Uh, however, this again is a suspending function, so we need to be inside a coroutine to be able to call it. And this time, we are actually uh, writing correct code if we create a new scope uh, locally and then we launch a new coroutine in that scope. Uh, this is how you should implement this. And um, the reason why this is okay to do is because we are not launching the coroutine as part of the composition, but instead only inside the function that we passed in as the onClick parameter. So this will only happen on every button click and not across three compositions. Okay, uh, so that was uh, the problems of creating coroutines inside a composition. Now let's talk a bit about flows. For this example, we'll build a simple loading animation and I'll assume that I already have this uh, helper function implemented, which is a rotated pizza slice that can take a number between zero and seven and display one of these uh, phases of the animation. So what we'll do here is we'll create a pizza loader function, which receives a flow of numbers as a parameter. And this will be a flow which produces numbers uh, starting at one and just incrementing um, endlessly uh, with certain delays in between, which we can use for our animation. Again, you could do this in a much nicer way if you are just looking to animate this, um, but we want to look at uh, flows here. Uh, because we need to be in the zero to seven range with our values that we pass into the helper function, we want to map this flow uh, so we can take the remainder of each of the values by eight that gives us uh, values between just zero and seven and then repeating over time. 
And we need to actually collect the flow to get values out of it. So I can call collect a state, start with an initial value of zero. And this already gives me a plain int if I delegate it to a local variable. So I can now just call the rotated pizza slice helper function. So if we run this, we'll see that it's not working correctly. It's just popping back and forth between the two um, initial states. So why does that happen? Again, uh, everything that we're doing here is happening as part of composition. And the core of the problem is that the map operator creates a new flow instance every time it's called, and it's called every time that we recompose. Uh, similarly, this collection on the next line will restart every time that we have a new flow from the previous line. Um, so basically, as soon as we collect a value uh, from this flow, which takes us from the initial zero value to one, which we see on the animation, our pizza loader function recomposes, we throw away our existing flow and the collection that was associated with it, and we create a brand new flow based on the input and start collecting it from scratch again, starting with zero, collecting one, resetting, um, and repeat infinitely. Uh, so what we need to do here is keep the flow that we're creating across recompositions, which we can do by simply remembering it. And we can pass in the numbers value here as a key to make sure that we only recreate this if our input, input flow uh, value changes. Running this, we now see that we have a working animation which actually progresses through all of the phases. All right, um, for our third and last example, I wanna go back to this list that we already worked with. Uh, let's say that we have the amazing idea uh, of surge pricing pizzas. So we want to adjust their price uh, based on the current demand. Uh, for this, we'll use a view model and we'll depend on a pizza repository which exposes a flow of uh, pizzas. Uh, this contains the currently available list, uh, whatever we have um, in stock and its current prices. And inside the view model, I'm calling staten on that flow that the repository is providing uh, so that uh, I can then observe this uh, state flow from the UI side. So uh, we already have the existing pizza list function that we implemented a couple examples ago. So we'll reuse that, it had this signature. And we'll create a live pizza list now, which takes a view model as a parameter. And really we just need to connect these two things now. So we can just uh, grab the state flow from the view model, read the value that's inside it, and pass it into the pizza list function. Running this code, we'll see that our prices never change, even though the repository is actually producing new values. So let's see why that's happening. The error that we made here is that uh, we are reading the value of a state flow. And this state flow will have new values over time, but Compose has no idea about when that happens because uh, the state flow is not connected to Compose in any way. Compose can only detect changes and then re um, trigger recompositions based on that. Um, on compose state objects. So we need to convert the state flow into composable state first, uh, which we can do by calling the collect as state function. Uh, while we are here, I want to emphasize that if you're on Android, you should really use collect as state with lifecycle instead, uh, which is now stable, um, which makes sure that you are doing things in a lifecycle aware way, and for example, not wasting resources when your app is in the background. So uh, with these changes, now that we are actually collecting uh, the flow, uh, we can see that we have this wonderful uh, list of pizzas which have uh, dynamic pricing on them. All right, uh, to summarize, uh, very important, watch out for what happens as part of the composition. Don't start coroutines uh, and don't create flows there. Uh, use launch effect to call into suspending APIs in Compose. Always collect state flows as state instead of reading their values. And if you're on Android, don't forget the lifecycle aware, collect a state with lifecycle API. Uh, here are some resources that you can take a look at to learn more about these, uh, about the different phases of the Compose uh, rendering pipeline, about the uh, side effect APIs uh, available in Compose, which can bridge Compose and coroutines. And uh, finally, about um, consuming flows on Android in a lifecycle aware way. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. Uh, please don't forget to vote on the session in the app. Uh, and that's everything I wanted to cover. Thank you.